In this uh, video tutorial, I would like to demonstrate how to use MSG and a plugin called WormTrack to automatically quantify thrashing rates of C. elegans swimming in liquid, uh, M9 buffer in this case. And uh, what you see here on the screen is a video of C. elegans N2 animals um, uh, that are swimming in M9 on a, uh, an NGM plate that I have flooded. Um, what you can also see is that uh, the video contains uh, part of the bacterial law and in addition there, there's uh, some flickering caused by the 60 Hz uh, light source that I was using to illuminate the, the scenery. Um, so I'm gonna go through a few steps one can use to enhance the movie to uh, allow the worm track to, to uh, get the, to automatically pinpoint the positions of all the animals in the scene. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my plugins and I have installed a plugin called Stack Defligger and it comes with the worm tracker. And what it does is that it normalizes each frame. And in this case, I'm going to normalize to the maximum, the frame with the, with the highest light intensity. And what you'll see that it starts calculating going through all the, the frames. And as a as you can see now, uh, the flickering is completely gone. And if you were to save this movie in a compressed file format, it would also give you a much smaller uh, file size, uh, since all the flickering doesn't need to be uh, accounted for in the, in the movie. Uh, so now we have a much nicer movie. So the next step we want to do is uh, do a, a background subtraction. And uh, what uh, I prefer to do here is to do a, a C stack projection on the stacks C project and if we select a maximum intensity projection what you will see is that uh, we get only what's constant in the movie so all the moving animals are completely gone in the maximum uh, C projection but we have all the constant items such as the bacterial lawn and other small uh, uh, specs in the scene. So what we can do is we can uh, calculate uh, the difference between these two movies or the, the difference between the movie and, and the uh, C projection and ImageJ has a function to do that. It's called uh, Image Calculator. And what we want to do is to calculate the difference between the original movie and our maximum projection. And in this case, I'm just going to overwrite the original movie. And click yes to process all frames. And what you now see is that uh, all the background is completely gone and all that's left is uh, the worms swimming. Um, and we can get rid of the background now. And the next step I would like to do is to convert this movie into a binary format so that uh, the worm track plugin can automatically tell what is worm and what is background. To do this, I'm going into adjust threshold. And if we start playing the movie again, uh, we have to select first. Uh, uh, we have a dark background and now one can automatically uh, manually select um, a threshold that, that is uh, suitable or one can choose from a number of presets um, and in this case I'm going to use the maximum entropy and I'll click, click apply and I'll close down this window and what you will see now we only have uh, the animals left in the movie uh, as black objects on a white background. And this is perfect for the worm track plugin. And I'm just gonna stop the movie now and what and select the, the worm track plugin. And what you will see here uh, as the worm track plugin pops up, there's a lot of input perimeter parameters. And um, I'll just briefly take you through each of the, the fields. There's a minimum size, which is the minimum object area in pixels. And I knew I know from previous experience that 
the animals in this taken with this objective and in this resolution have an op, uh, an area of approximately uh, 140 to 50 uh, pixels in the dog. Of course there are animals that are smaller and there are animals that might be larger. Uh, so I'm going to type in a range of uh, areas from 80 to 250. The next field is um, how many pixels uh, one would allow, uh, or the algorithm allows a, an animal to move from one frame to the next. And of course, worms do not make quantum leaps. They actually move uh, using Newton, Newton's uh, mechanics. So uh, this, the speed at which they can move is, is, is limited. The next field is um, the maximum area change. So if two animals or two objects collide, the area of the object will increase uh, or, or double. And, and this way, uh, the plugin can tell if two objects are colliding, uh, because, because it only allows them to change by up approximately 30% from frame to frame. The next uh, field is the minimum track length. So uh, the plugin will discard all the tracks that are less than, in this case, 100 frames. The next field is a threshold used for the bend detection algorithm, and I'll get back to this in a little bit. Um, for now, I'm going to disable the show pass and, delete, uh, and enable the plot bend track. And I'm going to tell the plugin that the movie I have is 28 frames per second. And let's get things started. So first it finds all the pixel, uh, all the particles, and next it uh, joins the tracks. And what we will see popping up last is uh, a quality control uh, movie uh, showing all the tracked animals. And uh, as I play this movie, you can see, for instance, uh, animal number one or track number one. Uh, counts uh, has a B count that counts up each time the animal is stretched. So one can uh, by eye validate that the counting of the uh, uh, tracker is uh, accurate. Uh, so, and you can see that animal number one completed approximately 30 uh, body bends. And how it, the algorithm uh, uh, or the, the plugin tracks this is by uh, using um, by measuring the, uh, an aspect ratio of the, an ellipse that is fitted to the object. And what you'll see here in the green curve is the aspect ratio as a function of uh, frames. And what you'll see in the black curve is uh, a, a, a mathematical way of enhancing these peaks so they can easily be quantified uh, by a, a stupid computer program. <laughs> So each time the black peaks uh, uh, go above a threshold of 1.5 as a set, um, it will be counted as half a body bend, or in this case, actually a body stretch. The next thing I would like to show is uh, the results window. This contains all the information about each track of the animals. So uh, as I mentioned before, track one, um, you can see that the animal we tracked actually had an area of uh, 196 pixels. But the most important thing uh, in this case is, of course, the number of bends. And by dividing this number of 30 bends by the time, 29.9 uh, seconds, we can calculate that the animal actually had a one uh, bend per second or refreshing with exactly one hertz. The next window I would just like to show a little bit about is the summary window. Oops. And what you can see here is the, this will become important when we start to analyze several movies because it gives a, a summary of what's going on in each movie. You have the, the file name of the movie, you have the number of objects, and you have uh, the total number of uh, seconds that objects were tracked in the movie, and you have the total number of bends. So in principle, you can 
divide the total number of bends by the total number of seconds to get the average body bends per second. But the, this value, this particular value, is is the average of all the body bends per seconds uh, in the tracks here. And uh, this concludes the demonstration.